All right, I'm live. I am live. We'll see if anyone joins soon. Your channel is live. Great. I'm going to read my email while people come and join. Ah. And three-day weekends were always the best. The four-day week is a super nice. Uh, yeah, I, I think I should do that. Um, I'm getting more and more convinced about three-day weekends. Uh, you're doing a great job. All right. What's the next one? Is anybody watching? No, two people watching. Excellent. Donner Pass. There he is. There's Donner Pass. He's the man of the hour. I'm sorry I'm so late. And Whiskey Lover Society. There's Hert Ratif from Belgium, unless he's traveling somewhere. He could be anywhere. From Zanzibar to Timbuktu. This guy goes to all kinds of different places and shows us um, whiskey um travel retail all over the world incredible i'm just having a snack or i'm finishing my dinner i'm kind of late lisa was over all afternoon and we shot some video they're gonna be good they're gonna be good uh what else let me wait until we get a few more people on We've got three people watching yay um gonna go through some email again I just have to go through some email because I was with Lisa all afternoon. Um, <laughs> so leg has, has got two smileys on there. Okay. Uh, don't shave. What is that? Somebody's telling me not to shave. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> um, I asked someone what skag drag was, and he said it was don't shave and then uh, dress up in women's clothing. <laughs> now I know. Uh, Scotch chest dummies. Oh, okay. They're, they tried Pender and Rihanna. I'm going to have to have a look at that someday soon. Uh, uh oh 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 I have to I have to do this Ah, interesting. Tricky. Very tricky. Very tricky. Okay, forget about that. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. They're all trying to scam me these days. It's terrible. Okay, that's good. And there's, okay, uh, checking into the Ridge Tahoe up on the cliff. Okay, this is from Tim. Tim is also, I think, on this stream. Uh, let me get back to that for a second before I finish answering my email and seeing who else oh we got more people in here graham young is here cheers andy very glad to see you live my friend yes good to have you with us 
and there's eight people watching. That's good. I'm just going to finish looking at my email. There's a couple more. Um, okay. This one is, oh, from Barry Dunham. This is one I'd love to try someday, and it was the Millstone Dutch Single Rye Whiskey that I tried. Always nice to try whiskey from a country not known for whiskey. The high coast whiskeys from Sweden are another on my list. Okay. Um, I better send him a message saying right now that I'm live if he's still awake. It would be close to midnight where he lives now. Uh, um, uh, you'll get it. I'm live now. Okay. And that was three hours ago. Uh, I was still tasting whiskey with Lisa at that time. Okay, uh, we've done that one, and the next. Uh, uh, it's nothing. Okay, here we are again. There's about two more e emails to look at. Uh, oh. Uh, it's a comment on a video I made a few years ago. When was the last time you saw 50,000 Scotsmen marching? Mm. I don't know what model of guitar the guy was using. I made a video of this guy like four years ago. Couldn't tell you. Sorry. I don't know what kind of guitar the guy was using. He was on stage and he had a guitar and he's playing his guitar and I made a video of him uh, on stage. I'm not an expert on guitars. Um, here we go. Um, surprise unboxing. Yeah, this is, this is the uh, message for this video that, that is up. So let's get back to this video or this live video that is going on right now. Um, okay, here we are. Okay, what else is there? Uh, had to line up Puni tonight. Italian single malt. Yes, I've had a couple of those. From bourbon cask to Lafroy cask, aged very great stuff all around. Puni, yeah, I like Puni. It's good stuff. Well, we got six people watching, which is maybe not as good as eight, but better than two. So let's go open up the uh, the box. This box has traveled to me from Donner Pass Whiskey. And it has traveled from me back to Donner Pass Whiskey. Now it has traveled from Donner Pass Whiskey back to me again. It has had samples in it. I'm going to go through, see what samples we got. I might be retiring this box because it looks like it got kind of bashed up in the last, the last time it was sent. Mashed up and taped back together. This is going to be. Okay, hopefully I can get this. This box unboxed. Okay. Okay, here we go. There's a piece of cardboard. There's a piece of foam. Oh, Donner Pass has done a nice job this time. There are pieces of foam and there are bottles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Seventeen bottles. Wow. This is going to be exciting. This is going to be real exciting. Have a look at this. They're all they're all stuck in there. They're individually wrapped in bubble wrap, and uh, there's foams in between and foams all around them and foams all around the outside of the box. What a nice job! What have we got here? Okay, and they've been closed up with masking tape. Ah. Come on, you. What is this from Donner Pass? Nine people watching now. Excellent. Excellent. This is just what we need. Okay. 
This one says, Caden Heads, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Shop, Isla Pete, Big Glass, Yeah, Fur, uh, uh, Jug Blend, 57.5% alcohol by volume. Caden's Heads, Edinburgh Shop, Isla Pete. Well, this must be right from the, the shop in Edinburgh, the Catenhead shop. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now, that's a good core care package. Well packed. Yes, very well packed. Indeed. Excellently packed. Donner Pass has done a great job this time. Uh, he's done a great job every time. But now they are quick sized grams, too. And I think you mentioned that at some point, that this time they were going to be quick-sized grams. Bah. Okay. What's this one? This one is signatory Edra Dower, nine years, 61.4%. Non-chill filtered, not colored. First fill, Marsala Hogshead. Wow. This is going to be a treat. He sent me so many, too. Wow. That's going to be a tough act to follow up on. Ah. Wow. Let's see what we got here. Get this masking tape off. Get this shelf through here. Oh, come on. I'm just popping these things like crazy. What do we got? Uh, let's see here. Deanston, 2008, nine year, 58.7%. Non-chill filtered, non-colored. Bordeaux red wine cask, full maturation. Oh, full red maturation. First, full maturation in Bordeaux red wine cask. Wow. It's going to take me a long time to get through all of these. Yeah. Let's see what else have we got. Yeah. Oh, what is this? This is Kill Karen 12, 46%. Bottle date 12 January of 2022. Did I have a Kill Karen 12 or Kill Karen 8? I would have to check. And here it says Glendronic 15 year old. But I think the Kilcarran 12 and 46%. Have I done that one? I'm sure I have. Uh, let me find my keyboard. Uh, there, there's my keyboard. Aaron 12. Oh. When was the last time I did it? Let's see now. Well, this is Ralphie. This is Ralphie doing Kill Karen 12. Hold on. Something's wrong here. Okay, mine is this one. Mine was January 26th of 2022, and I did it almost three years earlier, 2019 sometime. Let's have a look. Let's see now. Karen 12, yeah. May of 2019 and January of 2022. He sent me one from 12 of January 2022. So this is probably a later bottling than the one I got. Okay. All right. What else have we got? 
let's see, we got 10 people watching. Oh, we got some some comments here. Let's see now. Hello, hello, says Ben Demon Hunter. And Donner Pass is saying, that's a new Kilcarin 12 that tastes pretty different from the older bottles. Okay, that's fair enough. And here we got uh, Howdy Tim Hout and Graham Young. Okay, and that was Ben Demon Hunter saying that. And uh, Donner Pass is saying hi to Ben. Okay, well, that's good. What else have we got here? I'm, I'm running out of space. <laughs> That is my keyboard on top of all kinds of things. And uh, what else have we got here? What else do we have? Oh, you made real sure that these would not break. A lot of that bubble wrap, very meticulously wrapped, I will say. Good job. Ah. Glenn Turret 12, 2020, made and release, 46% alcohol by volume, not so filter, not code. First fill sherry casks. Okay, I've never had a Glenn Turret. This will be interesting. And Whiskey Scout. Uh, okay, we've got uh, Morning Ben says Hept. And uh, next, hey, folks, says Whiskey Scout. Yeah, we're getting people in here. This is good. What's this? Butch W. Don't see, haven't seen that name before. Uh, or if I did, I don't remember. Don't drink, but love your videos. The way you describe things is awesome. Well, thank you. I do what I can, although some people think I'm thinking it. And... Uh, Ben Demon Hunter is saying howdy to the Whiskey Scout. And I'm breaking some more of these bubbles as I'm trying to get the next one out. I'm, I'm being impatient. I'm not being careful and meticulous like, uh, like Donner Pass Whiskey is. Or should we say Tim because everyone by now knows that Donner Pass's name is Tim. I won't go as far as saying the last name, but Tim should suffice. We know it's Tim. We know it's Donner Pass Whiskey. Okay. Signatory, Glenn Livett, 13-year-old, seven months. First fill sherry butt, 46%. Not so filtered, not colored. Oh, interesting for Glenn Livett. Glenn Livett is usually colored and filtered and everything else. Oh, let's see now. That's six out of 17, I think. Where am I going to put all these things? Good gosh. I've got so many samples that they're coming out everywhere. All right. Let's put these, let's put these up here uh, on the table. I think I'll have enough samples to last me an entire year. And the Whiskey Scout says hi to Ben Demon Hunter and Demon Hunter and saying, where did the samples come from? These are all from uh, Donner Pass Whiskey, the ones I'm doing tonight. Uh, I had some samples from Eric and the Malt Muser. I had a whole bunch of samples from um, Mike Menard in North Ontario. And I had a box full of samples, 12 samples from, um, or is it 13, from uh, Barry Dunham in London, Ontario. So people have sent me samples. I've sent them samples too. So we've had a full exchange. Uh, but Mike Menard was really generous. He, he sent me these mason jars with whiskey in them. I mean, and a lot of them are full. <laughs> Crazy samples this guy gives out. Crazy sample. I, I was just giving him these two ounce bottles like these ones here, you know, because <laughs> two ounce bottles like this one here, and that's that's what I sent what I what I usually send out. Two ounce bottles or 50 mil bottles. Springbank 15, 46%. Bottle date 17 August of 2020. 
I haven't had a Springbank 15 that young yet. Or the ones that I've had were earlier bottlings, the ones where it said Springbank, 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 Springbank all the way down the side of it in green on a black bottle, uh, on a black box. Let's see. Okay, what's this one? A lot of breaking, or should we say, popping bubbles. All right. Fault line, 50% blended scotch, non-chill filtered, non-colored, Douglas Lang, made for KNL San Francisco heavy peat. Ah, that's something I'd never find near here. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. And what is this? Uh, oh, great, cool, he says. Yeah, that's where they all came from. Different places. Uh, all right. And what's here? Uh, mason jars, that's priceless. Oh, yeah, it's priceless, especially when you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Especially when you get like 16 of them. And six of these little guys, these are like the master of malt with the, um, with the top uh, that's covered in... Um, you call that stuff uh, wax that guy Mike Menner he sent me so many samples and with the mason jars and everything it's like okay I think a good standard is that the two ounce the two ounce bottle from a company called Uline Uline is everywhere and the bottles are quite standardized. They're like these two, two ounce bottles. Here's an old particular Blair Athol, 21 year old, at 56.1% non chill filtered, not colored. Refill bourbon hogs have fantastic. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be even amazingly amazing. If you know where that quote comes from, maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, well, I'm drinking that Springbank 15 now. Fantastic. I've had a few whiskeys today. And the videos that Lisa and I made tonight, or just in the afternoon into the evening, will be coming up starting on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Spayburn 15. Oh, I saw videos about this one not long ago. And saying that it's wonderful stuff, full maturation in a combination of Spanish oak, sherry, and bourbon casks. Because I had the only Spayburn I ever had was a Spayburn 10, I think. And it was like nothing special to me. So I never really pursued Spayburn after that. But in all fairness, Spayburn is not that available near where I live. So, yeah. What is this here? Uh, all this bubble wrap. Okay. And this one is the Six Isles blended malt, 43%, not so filtered, not colored. Isla, Jura, Sky, Mo, Orkney, Aaron, William Maxwell and Company. That's going to be something else. That is going to be really something else. Six Isles blended malt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's really going to be something. Okay. Next. Uh, Mason jars, he's a good friend. <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. The guy is priceless. I just have some leftover charcuterie and cheese. Because Lisa came to visit. We hung out all afternoon. 
tasted whiskey. We talked about things. Yeah. Hart Brothers Glen Ord. I've had a couple of bottlings from Hart Brothers. They were nice. Eight-year-old single first fill. All it also sherry, but 57.5%. Oh, that's going to be a beauty. That was going to be interesting. Yeah, I've had some Hart Brothers diluent and there was another Hart Brothers I had, but right now uh, I think it's bunkered underneath my bar, and it would be a bit of a hassle to dig it out and see what it is. Okay, what's this? What's Ben say? Ben Eden and Hunter. I think at some point I'll need to order a box of two ounce samples. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Donner Pass says, hope you still have the new Highland Park 15. You now have the old pre-Viking hype Highland Park 15 for comparison. Um, new Highland Park 15. Uh, give me a second. Yes. Yes. The bottle is almost full. The flagon is almost full. I don't go for it very often because I, I don't go for that one very often because it's really not my favorite. Far from being my favorite, actually. But it would be nice to compare the two. Uh, Glen Scotia single cask 98. Three of 2006 to 11 of 2018. 12 year old, eight months, 57.9%. First filled bourbon, nacho filtered, non colored, and peated. Yeah, that would be interesting too. Wow, what a treat. This is like Christmas. Lisa would have stayed, but she didn't feel good about going live on camera, so, you know, she went home. But we had a nice afternoon of hanging out into the evening. Another Hart Brothers, 17-year blended malt. Oh, oh, 50% sherry cask finish. And it's a 17-year-old blended malt. I guess it doesn't say what malts are in there, but it should be interesting being a blended malt. Mm. Now, is this a 15-year-old Highland Park? Old pre-Viking hype Highland Park. 15 at 43 percent. Okay, this, this I'm gonna have to try side by side with the one I have in the bar. <laughs> okay, what is this here? Nice selection. Shit, yeah, an excellent selection. One thing is for sure: Donner Pass whiskey. Tim has good taste. Ben Demon Hunter says, Glen Ord, I see that distillery pop up from time to time. Interesting. Must be always IB. Independent bottling. Oh, yeah, Glen Ord. There's, there was a singleton of Glen Ord, but I think that was for, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the singleton of Glen Ord was for the Asian market because the, the singleton that we can get here in Canada is from the... Uh, shit, I don't have any, so I can't really check. 
I remember I had a singleton from a thrusk, but that was 40 years ago. And the singleton we get here is from, um, it's a space side distillery. It's um, McDuff or Dufftown, something like that. I don't remember exactly. But Glen Ord, I've never seen a Glen Ord either independent or anywhere around here. Or, or even online from Alberta. Strange. But it will be nice to try that. Okay, we got, uh, I think they do a SI. SI. Are you talking about Glen Ord? Or independent bottling. Um, don't know what that means. Okay, well, I'm not going to try and figure that out. Maybe you can clarify. I don't know. I have two bottles left here. I will have a look at these two other bottles. And maybe have a dram with you guys. We've been going on for oh, half an hour. Very nice. Okay, this is... Compass Box Glasgow Blend. Start again. Compass Box Glasgow Blend Single Marrying Cask 49% NCFNC Old Craig Elliki Sherry Butt Finish. Hmm. That's something I've never seen before. That should be interesting. Okay. Was this a clarification? I hope so. Okay. I think Singleton of Glenord may be the only Diageo bottle. Um, the only Diageo bottle of Glenord, you mean? Now, isn't Glenord uh, a Diageo distillery if it's a Diageo bottle? Glen Ord could be one of these uh, Diageo distilleries that's used in blends, mostly. Hmm. Scotch or brandy? Well, no, I don't really do brandy much. It's this is all scotch, but I drink other kinds of whiskey too. I drink uh, Irish whiskey and Canadian whiskey and uh, Indian whiskey and uh, bourbons and rye from the United States. And uh, I've had French whiskey, Italian whiskey. I've had whiskey from Austria and Germany, India, most places in the world where they make whiskey including Taiwan. So what's this? This is the, the last one. This is the empty box. And I like these foams, these foam, foam liners. I might, I might use this box again and <laughs> send it back to Tim. Yeah. This is the last one of all those samples. What a bunch of samples. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen samples? Wow, that's hard to beat. Okay. Um, and it says here, Quiggy got a grip of K and L malts. Yeah, that's going to be nice, Cohen. Gonna enjoy that. Benaroma cast strength batch one. Distilled in 2007, 58.2%. Um, bottled in 2018. No until filter, not colored. Full maturation in first fill bourbon and sherry casks. Nice. That is quite a collection of 
little bottles I have now. <laughs> awesome. Very awesome. Excellent. Uh, what's here? Mm. Whiskey Scout says, have an official bottle of Glenord 12 prior singleton bottling. It has a low neck full, so I have not opened it yet. Oh. Oh, that might be interesting too. And good evening at Cohen says Ben Demon Hunter. Well, yeah, we got 11 people watching now. That's really nice. Thank you all for tuning in. I may have a dram or two with you all. And I don't know, what should I get now? I'm just eating the last of this ham. And Triscuits. Lisa loves Triscuits. And some cheeses. Had a big bowl of soup, too. Mm. Okay. I should cut the crap and pour a gram, no? Yeah. I know. I'm going to go cheap and good. Sark Prohibition. It's cheap and it's good. It's a blended Scotch whiskey bottled at 50% alcohol by volume. Just right. Yeah. Food quick. You like the Caledonia distillery from Victoria? Yes. Keep hearing other Canadians saying it's a nice distillery with good quality bottles. Yes. I have um, made several videos from Macaloni's Caledonian. And uh, I think the stuff is beginning to get around in the world. It's actually the nearest distillery to where I live. It's just up the road. It's like a 10 minute drive. Not even. Yeah, okay. 10 minute drive. Yeah, this stuff is pretty good. The only bone of contention I have with Caledonia Distill Mac Macaloni's Caledonian Distillery is that compared to. Uh, Other distilleries, like uh, Shelter Point and Two Brewers, they are generally a little more expensive. And they're all young. Well, so is Shelter Point. So is uh, Two Brewers. But Shelter Point at least has some 10-year-old juice or at least they did in the last year. But Macaroni's is all quite young. It's like, I think the oldest, oldest thing they have bottled is about five years old, maybe six. Ah. Mm. Yeah, Macaroni's is all right. Just like I said, a little bit expensive. I would like to see them put put out a, a some older whiskey because a lot of it is still quite young. A lot of what they're selling is not even old enough to be called whiskey. So they just call it malt. But they don't call it whiskey. They call it uh, brach. I guess brach is Scots Gaelic for malt. What's this? Ah, Donner Pass. Really enjoyed all the different two brewers releases that I sent. 
Curious how the fault line sample would compare to the prohibition edition. Oh, fault line. What was that? Let me see if I can find it. Mm. Fault line. Oh, where did I put that? It's got, oh, here we are. Fault line, 50% blended scotch. Douglas Lang. Fifty percent blended. How this would compare to oh the prohibition edition which I'm which I have here. Well the fault line is it a, does it say more? Oh no, it's a blended scotch. Oh I see. Okay, yeah, fifty percent. Hmm. I could try the two side by side when I actually do open the fault line. That's a good idea. I could do that. I should make a note. And uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 This will remind me. Okay, I, I I had a bottle of Alberta Premium there with one of these Canadian Club 100% rye stuck to it using one of these. So now I'm going to stick this to the Prohibition. And I'm going to stick the fault line to it like so. So now I have the fault line on the Prohibition, and I'm going to try the two together sometime. How's that? There. That's one little suggestion uh, fixed up. Okay. What was this one that we were doing? Old pre-Viking Highland Park. Okay. Okay, okay. I'm going to connect that one up the same way onto this one, this Highland Park 15, with the pre hype one. Now, do I have another one of these plastic things here somewhere? Or did they end up getting thrown out or chucked away? Ah, here we are. Let's put this on here like so. And the... Uh, Pre-Viking hype, Highland Park, like so. How's that? We got the pre-Viking hype, and we got the Viking hype. So that's going to be another sample Sunday, one beside the other. eventually someday. Well, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay. And here we got, it's great to hear, Grainhenge is five minutes away from me. Grainhenge. Okay. I've never heard of them. Let's look that up. Inhenge. Inhenge whiskey proudly made by Trouble Monk. Greenhenge whiskey, are you of legal drinking age? Yes. I should hope so by now. Greenhenge releases will be in small batches with limited availability. Receive emails about how to purchase and other Greenhenge news. Okay. 
Oh, right. And it subscribed, I think. I gave it my email address. Grainhenge Whiskey. Welcome, Grainhenge, a celebration of mysterious synergies created when people and ingredients are brought together, curiosity, curiosity and consideration. There's Garrett Haynes, whoever he is. Our story, proudly made by Trouble Monk. If the elevator row is available now. Uh, join our mailing list. I think I did that already. Doesn't say where that is. Releases contact. <coughs> blog. I only have a blog. So where is Green Hedge? What what is their location? I'm sorry, Ben. I didn't realize I don't don't know exactly where you live. So um, nice looking website anyway. Let's get back to our uh, stream yard. <coughs> Okay, Donner passes here with uh, the Macaroni's Caledonian was very good too. Really enjoyed it. Mm hmm. Which ones did I send you? Did I send you the Glenloy or one of the Invermalleys or some of the Invermalleys? Probably something like that. Thanks, Food Quig and Tim says Ben Demon Hunter. Okay, and what have we got here? New bottling is yeah, it's a it's a porcelain flagon. Yeah. The Highland Park 15. This is fun, says Donner Pass Whiskey. Okay. Yes, it is, Tim. Exciting. Okay. Uh, top shelf. Dustin is here saying, cheers, Squiggy. I'm on another live. But wanted to say cheers. Oh, thank you. I didn't know you were live. I was totally unaware of what's going on anywhere. I just came charging on. Because that's what I do. What other library you want? No, I don't want to really go there. Okay. Well, thank you for joining and dropping in from Slanchaba. Van Demon Hunter is here. Cool thing about Grain Hinge is that they ship across Canada. Yeah, that's nice. I think Shelter Point does the same. But where is Grain Hinge? Oh, what is this here? Trouble Monk Grain Hinge is in Red Deer. Oh, Red Deer, Alberta. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, now that I've subscribed to them, they might send me some uh, email. Wait, I have an email waiting. Greenhenge Whiskey. Here it is. Okay. Greenhenge is celebration. Learn more. Oh, yeah. Ah, mailing address in Red Deer. Yeah. Uh, Green Henge will release in small batches with limited supply. Okay. I wonder if this takes me to their website again. Hmm. hmm. Okay. Now we know where Green Hinge is from.
Yeah, shipping across Canada is good. Hmm. Ah, what is here? Single malt Canadian elevator robot one was, I believe, 43 months. Single malt. Hmm. So they're pretty young, just like macaronis. And just like all the batches from two brewers, they're all quite young. Very tasty. Forty eight months, forty three months, and fifty eight point two percent alcohol by volume. I guess they're not joking around, are they? Oh, what's this? Capital CS single malts from Cali looks like a good price at KL. Five years old. Hmm. A five year old single malt. What does it go for? Is it around $80 or $90 US a bottle or less? Because in Canada, one of these. Small distillery bottles uh, usually goes for upwards of a hundred bucks, and we're talking hundred Canadian. Shelter Point had a lot of releases that were around seventy, eighty dollars, which were nice. Elevator Row is the dark Munich mash bill that they use for their pesky pig ale. Not too sure if BC gets the Trouble Monk beer ale. I wouldn't know. I don't. Drink beer. I had to stop drinking beer years and years ago when I found out that I was diabetic. So I have to stick to, ah, oh, these things are dirty. I have to stick to fermented spirits. No, oh, these things are dirty. I, I just got, probably got food all over them. Okay. Here, uh, <laughs> right, food quick. Hundred dollars Canadian. There you go. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> hmm. Capital CS five years. Forty nine ninety nine. Sixty six point seven percent. I don't have anything that strong. That's incredible. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. That is a good price. Mm -hmm. And fair enough, yeah. It sounds interesting with the Munich malt whiskey. Yeah, very much so. So first they use their beer making expertise. They make the beer and then they distill it. And age it, produce a whiskey. It's the same thing two brewers does. Ah. Ben Eamon Hunter says, Donner Pass whiskey 
Whiskey Heathens and Training and Sea both have YouTube videos about the two whiskey releases from Crane Henge. Hmm. I didn't see that. This is the first I hear of Whiskey Heathens. And Tranny and C, I haven't seen them. Or maybe I did see them and forgot all about it. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Craft brewery that created the craft distillery. Yep. Okay. High Coast. Berg is on sale at KL for $43.99. Really good price. Is that a, that Swedish whiskey that they were talking about? I think so, right? They couldn't call it. Uh, they couldn't call it what they used to call it, if I'm correct in assuming. I was very interested in High West. Mm, High West, yeah. I've had a couple things from High West. But he meant High Coast. Aha! Yeah. Yes, Swedish. Yeah, that was the one I remember. I've never had any of it, but I heard all about it. Okay, what's this here? Ben Demon Hunter, if I was to pick up my first Swedish whiskey, it'll be high coast. Okay. I had um, the, uh, what's that stuff called? The part I remember of the name is Svensk Rök. And Svensk Rök is from, um, oh, uh, there goes the old head. I don't remember. Um, that other Swedish um, story. Um, Mikamira? Yeah, Mikamira. <laughs> Or Macamira, Macamira, that's it. The Svensk Rick. I tried that online with uh, uh, Rene from uh, Solig. And uh, I don't know, I didn't like it. He also says catnap. And uh, how late am I? Oh, I've only been on for about an hour. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to go. The Berg is PX at 50% ABV. It is from Sweden and was called Box. Yes, that's right, Box. Uh, and they changed the name to High Coast because of Compass Box. That's right. Now I'm clued in completely. Thank you very much, Cohen. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Uh, ben Demon Hunter, good evening, <laughs> Catnap. <laughs> and Catnap says, hey, Ben. And Catnap says, hey, Quig, hope I wasn't a bother about the bimber. I was just blown away by it. Well, that's okay. Um, that's all right. I um, I appreciate your concern for my uh, enjoyment of whiskey. That's cool. That's fine. But I, I, I got a hold of all the bimber I could as soon as I heard that it was available. And I think I got it from, uh, where did I get it from? Uh, oh, let me see if I got it from here. This is Craft Cellars. Let's see. Did I get that back in July? Yes, back in July, I bought the Bimber X Bourbon Single Malt Whiskey, Batch 3. I bought the Bimber Canada Edition. That's the one you were uh, telling me about. That's the single malt at 58.7% ABV. And I also got a bottle of Bimber Apogee X11, a 12-year-old single malt English whiskey. Yeah. And that will be coming up eventually. Um, 
that was November, June 7, what was this? Yeah, okay, I just did the ones from June 7th, and the Bimber will be coming up. Uh, yeah, but first I've got the whole summer release from BC Liquor Stores to consider, and I've got some more uh, Macaloni's Caledonian to check out before I get to this uh, July 5th shipment of, uh, it was uh, three Bimbers, Let's see now, what did I what did I buy? Three members and a Glen Deveron twenty year old, which was only one hundred and nineteen ninety nine. I couldn't bear to pass up a twenty year old whiskey at one hundred twenty dollars. I I just couldn't pass it up. I had to go for it, so I went for it. And back to here, Streamyard. No, you weren't a bother. It was good. I'm glad that you're, you know, concerned that that uh, I should get this. Uh, I got it already. And what's here? Um, awesome. I look forward to those Bimber vids. Seems Bimber is really making waves. Uh, did you see my videos that I shot more than three years ago at the Bimber Distillery with uh, uh, Jason Whiskey Wise? He took me to the Bimber Distillery, and we tried all kinds of things of theirs. At the bar, we sampled, I think, everything they had, or everything they'd made. They had gin and vodka and all kinds of other things. And, uh, and some uh, some single malts that were not old enough to be called whiskey, I think. But uh, the visit to the Bimber Distillery was incredible. And I brought back so many samples from them. I was tasting samples from Bimber for quite a while. Yeah, it was quite an experience to go there. And so yeah, when I saw their their stuff online, I had to I had to jump on it. Are you looking forward to the November special release? Of course I am. I was just at the BC liquor store yesterday, and um, they told me November seventh. Was it November seventh? Let me check my calendar. It's a Saturday, October, November. It would be November 5th. November 5th, Saturday, November 5th. Be there. I said, yeah. And uh, I'll probably go back to the BC liquor store again or to a BBC, a BC liquor store again soon uh, to check out what list they have. But what's important is that they have whatever is on the shelf, I will go for it. When, when I see what's on the shelf, I don't need a pre-listing. I'm going to be probably first in line anyway. So whatever's on the shelf, I will grab what I would like from the shelf. Okay, next. Donor Pass is having some Benroma Cast Strength Batch 1 from 2007. Wonderful. And here I am drinking Cuddy Sark. But it's a good Cuddy Sark. And I'm going to be coming back and having something else after this one probably. Let's see. Tim and Food Quake. Anyone, have you had Ben Riech Peated Cast Strength? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I did. Is this the kind of thing you're talking about? Uh, well, that's Ben Romick. Sorry. <laughs> I always get those two mixed up.
No, right now I've got some Benria Smoky 12, and I've got some an eight-year-old, um, eight-year-old uh, Benria bottled by Hepburn's Choice, which I didn't really like. So, you know, with indie, with independent bottlers, either they're superb or they're just crap. That's been my experience so far. Did you know that you can buy online from Keg and Cork? Uh, maybe so. Uh, who are they? They're somewhere in Alberta, aren't they? Like, like somewhere around Edmonton. I've never even looked into them. <sighs> so many things to buy. It's incredible. I've got, I've got enough whiskey, I think, to last me just to taste till the end of the year. That's just to taste, just tasting, you know, three or four a week. I've got this mountain of samples here in front of me. It's going to take me, I think, a year to go through all the samples that I have on hand right now, thanks to the generous actions of, well, uh, Donner Pass Whiskey, Tim, and Mike Menert, and uh, Barry Dunham, and, uh, of course, Eric Kirkstein, the malt user. Great guys we have in this community. I've, I've got some great friends. It's fantastic. You know, popularity may wax and wane. People might hate some of my videos or despise some of the guests that I have on at times. But on a whole, this community has been good to me. And... Uh, there are, I wish I could watch everyone's videos, everyone that makes videos, but I just don't have the time. I can't watch, um, you know, Roy Aquavite. Aqua I love the guy, but I can't go through two hour videos uh, that are being put up live when I'm sleeping. And that's when they happen, when I'm sleeping. I can't go back to watch them because there's just so many things going on. So that, uh, yeah, I, I watch what I can, you know. And what's here? Uh, Catnab G got lucky, grabbed the last two Glen Farkless 185th anniversary. So does that mean you're going to send one to me? If not, you know, I won't be too offended. It's all right. Uh, yes, remember your visit to the distillery with Jason Whiskey Wise. Very cool. Thank you. I think it was cool, too. Jason is a great guy. He showed me all over, all over London. Well, he gave me a crash tour of London in two days, which is pretty awesome because London is big and there's a lot to see. But we we checked out a, a lot of the whiskey venues and shops and things like that. And of course, the Bimber Distillery. That was a great thing. Catnap G. So you're a fellow Canuck. Are you in BC? Uh, well. I yeah, he's going to answer that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's awesome. I will check out Bimber videos. As usual, I'm late to the game, but alas, I catch up eventually. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, we are. Manus Nova. Okay. <laughs> that's right. That's that's where Winterpeg is, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have not had much Ben Riech, Ben. Says Donner Pass. Okay. Ben Riech. Yeah. Let's see. What is this here? Capital CS malt is heavily peated, and the peated grain came from Scotland. Just clicked and bought it. Lots of info on it at KNL. Okay. Too bad that uh, KNL does not ship here. Okay. Here we go. Catnab G, sorry, eh? Where is that? <laughs> ben Roach, Ben Ria, Ben Nevis, Ben Rothis, and Ben Demon. Ah, uh, there you go. Ben Romach, Ben Ria, Ben B Ben Nevis, Ben Rothis. Okay, now I yeah, okay. It's in Canada. <laughs> Ben Romich over Ben Riech. Hmm. Yeah. Tough call. I've had good ones from both. 
but you know there is personal preference of course <coughs> oh cool quick you have a 2007 sample uh, of what Oh, Barry Dunham replied to me. Oh, what's going on here? This is going to be weird. Um, damn, missed it. You again. Busy day heading to bed. Daughter's birthday party. Ten five-year-olds wore me out. <laughs> I can understand. Okay. I think it was to Barry that I said, uh, yeah, I said, said I'm alive now. He's the one who tried the Millstone Dutch or thought it was cool or something. Uh, is that what he said? Um, what did he say again? Mm, no stone. Oh yeah, whiskey's from all over the world. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm live now. Oh, damn it, missed you again. Busy day heading to, okay, heading to bed. Of course, over there uh, in in London, Ontario, it would be 10 o'clock now, so it would be 1 in the morning where he is. So, yeah, it would be kind of late. All righty. Got 11 people watching still. That's nice. A 2007 sample of, of what? I don't know. Maybe he'll tell me here. Want to have... And try all the bends, the mountain peak being Ben Nevis. Ah, Ben Nevis. I've got a couple of those. They are nice. I like Ben Nevis. And Edmonton, yes. Kegs and Cork. Edmonton, okay. Uh, maybe one day I'm going to look into them. But there are so many, so many shops already online that I can't keep up with them. Connect the Ben Roma Cast Strength 2010 bottle you showed to the 2007 Ben Roma Cast Strength sample scent. Oh. Okay, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm being slow. Okay, I got one of these plastic things. So you sent me Ben Roma Cast Strength 2010. It will take me a while to get through this. What should be the last one? Oh, here it is. Ben Roma CS Batch 1 Distilled 20, 2007. Okay, and the 2010 bottle. Of Ben Roma. Yeah, okay, sure. Let us do that. And I will try these out as well. Okay, there's my Ben Roma 2010. And here's the sample of Ben Roma. All right, we will connect these bottles. Is this cast strength? Yeah, cast strength. Okay, there's another another two that I need to try side by side. Get on there. Ah, it's a tight fit, but there it is. The two better omics. <laughs> Okay, well, we're coming along with these connections. It will make interesting one versus the other. Then over here, need to try any better luck for the first time. Yeah, I would say so. It's worth a go. It always makes me my night when you go live. Well, thank you very much, Catnap. Just want to rest. Okay, what else is going on here? 
I was actually hoping you'd be on tonight, but didn't want to bug you about it. Makes my day rough day. I've had a rough week. I've had a possibly rough week. And Lisa has had a rough week. Last night she called me up and said, and, and I told her, I'm drunk. I can't come and get you. I can't see you tonight. I am drunk, which I was. I got home in the morning after work, and I started doing a couple things. And then I figured, okay, I won't want to be disturbed in the evening, so I'm going to go out in the morning and get my groceries. So I got a few groceries, uh, which included some uh, Alberta Premium. Alberta Premium groceries, you know the kind. And uh, I got those, and uh, then I came home, and I couldn't sleep. So I started drinking, and I thought, okay, I'm not going to be bothered in the evening because I have my groceries already. I'm not going to have to go buy groceries. So what did I do? I started drinking some Ardbeg 10, and then I moved on to Ardbeg Scorch. And from there, I went and had some, Oh, I think it was a Lefroy quarter cask or something like that. And then I moved on to something a little stronger, like uh, Ardbeg Ugadal. And then I had a Port Charlotte uh, Puyak cask. And after the Port Charlotte, I went to, uh, I think it was Cory Vrecken. And after the Cory Vrecken, I went to the Lefroy. Uh, um, The Karchus, and after the Karchus, I went to Lefroy 10 batch strength or cast strength. You know how it goes. And of course, at that point, that's when Lisa called me last night. And, and I just said, I'm drunk, I'm going to bed, I've had enough. And so she called me again in the morning, or she sent me a message in the morning. Um, now yeah, it was around noon, and I had just got up at around nine and I was watching some YouTube videos and I thought, okay. I said, I just have to do my September paperwork. So my paperwork for the business and uh, be done in about an hour. And she says, can you pick me up at such and such place? And, okay. Right. And we went on a little um, run around one place to another, to another, to another. And then she forgot something at the first place, so we went over there. Then came over here, and we hung out, and we made four videos in the afternoon. So it was rough for me, too. Uh, I'm glad you didn't bug me about it, because I was going to come on anyway, because I got all these samples, and I wanted to open up the box and get together with all you guys and, you know, show you what I had. Yeah, rough day, rough week, rough life. This last month has been rough for everybody. And uh, good to know at Cohen that helps. What did Cohen say? He said, Ben Romach over Ben Riech. Okay, that's what he said. And what's Katnav say? Yes, Keg and Cork, they have some pretty good stuff. I keep learning about more and more stores in Alberta to shop at for better or worse. <laughs> laughing out loud. Yeah. Exactly. Ben Rinnis is another. Yes. Uh, ben Rinnis is another. Ben. What whiskey samples did you get today? Oh, crikey. I just went through them all. Uh, we got a pre hype um, Highland Park 15, pre Viking Highland Park 15. Also got uh, a Benroma cast strength from 2007. And what was the other one? Um, and, uh, oh, yeah. Some kind of blended 50% alcohol by volume scotch whiskey, which is similar perhaps to the prohibition from um, Cuddy Sark. So I'm going to try the two side by side. This was sent to me by Donner Pass. He also sent me Compass Box Glasgow Blend Single Marion Cask 49%. Craig Ellicky Sherry Butt Finish, something like that. Old particular Blair Athol 21 year old. 
56.1. Springbank 15, 46%. Bottle date 17 August of 2020. So that's probably a later bottling than anything I have from them. Spaburn 15, 46%. Full maturation in a combination of Spanish, Spanish oak sherry and bourbon cask. Okay. Deanston 2008, nine year old, 58.7%. Bordeaux red wine cask full maturation. Six Isles blended malt. That would be Isla, Jura, Sky, Mull, Orkney, and Aaron. William Maxwell Company. Next. Signatory, Glenn Livet, 13 year old. First fill sherry butt, 46%. Hart Brothers, Glen Ord, eight-year-old, 57.5%. Signatory, Edward Dower, nine-year-old, 61.4%. First fill, Marcella Hogshead. Glen Scotia, single cask, 98. Three, 2006 to three, two, 11, two, uh, 2018. 12 year, 8 month, 57.9% alcohol by volume. First field bourbon. Glen Turret 12, 2020. Made in reserve. 46% first field sherry cask. Hart Brothers 17 year blended malt, 50%. Sherry cask finish. Caden has Edinburgh shop. Isla Pete, big glass infinity jug blend, 57.5%. That, that will be interesting too. And a Kilcarran 12, 46%. Bottle date 12th of January 2022. So that's probably a later one than anything I've ever had before. So now you know what whiskeys I got from John Pass. Okay, let's move ahead with the uh, deal here. Shucks, Ben Rennes. I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Aren't all Ben Rennes independent bottle releases? I don't know. I've never seen uh, an official bottling, but I'm not really hunting for them. Catnap G would love to see the Bimber Distillery vids you did. Is there a link? Um, uh, yeah, hold on. I will check. Oh, Bimber, huh? Okay, just a moment. Ember. Okay, I did a lot of tasting here. Okay, there's nine videos all together. I will give you the whiskey tourism ones from Bimber. Um, Okay, here's one of them. There's one. And that's one. I'll put the rest of them up.
copy StreamYard and um, put this one up here. Okay. Okay, that's two. Let's see if I can go to a third one. It is part three. Part three. Edit, paste. It's not pasting. I don't know why part three is not pasting. I'm sorry about that. Technical difficulties we've had. I'm trying to do three things at once. And uh, yeah, I know it's a black screen. It's back. Uh, uh, let's see now. Part four. Let's see if I can put the part four up.
Okay, there's part four. Edit, copy. Edit, paste. There's part four. Now I'll try and get part three again. Okay, hopefully, hopefully there I am again. Now let's let's go for back to the part three of that other thing. Huh. All right. Okay, Catnap, I've sent three links. The, the, the number one and number two, I couldn't get the number three to work, but the number four worked. So you'll probably be able to find part three uh, after clicking on any one of those uh, one, two, and four parts. Now let's get back to what we're doing here. We're down to five people. There are Official bottles of Ben Rennes, but they are pricey, and you get plenty of Diageo coloring and chill filtering. Yes, if you can find them, eh, Cohen? Um, this, uh, vid this was at, uh, at 9.57, so almost 20 minutes ago. Next one from Ben. Wait, Peter White did send me a sample of Ben Rome with cast strength, but I don't remember which one it was. A very nice sample. <laughs> that happens. I say Ben Romick is better than Ben Ria, but with what I've had, okay. Say Quig, how's the Ben Romick 22 cast strength coming along? I don't know. Let's find out. Maybe I should pour myself one. Just a moment. Let me get some water first. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Let's see how this Ben Roma batch 01 2010 cast strength. And thanks to my friend Donner Pass Whiskey, Tim. There is a 2007 one uh, attached to it. So it's there. It's there for comparison purposes. Okay, what's next? Uh, open 14. <laughs> you 
funny. Let's see. When did I do that last time? Uh, Open 14. Yeah, that was uh, just recently. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be doing it again. I think I've done it to death by now, don't you? All right. Ben Nevis is the king of the Bens, and Ben Romach is the prince. <coughs> no, they're both good. Let's go for this Ben Romach. Ah. <coughs> Why am I getting some creosote here? I think you have nostalgia for Open 14. I do too. The memories as a newbie are far more enjoyable than the whiskey is itself. Yeah, I think you're right on that. For an experienced drinker, that is. Yes, of course. Uh, John Pass says, at Catnap G, his London and Scotland trip videos are in 2009, so you will have to go dial back a ways. Yeah, well, I, I left some links in here. Um, Open 14 is always better when it comes from a bottle you didn't buy yourself. <laughs> there you go. In 2020, a friend gifted me Open 14, and it was nice. Want to try another Open product? Uh, if you can get your hands on some Little Bay. Get the Open Little Bay. Open it. Have one dram. Leave the bottle for about nine months, then come back to it. That's my advice. Open Little Bay is good only after it has had a chance to open up, and then it is phenomenal. Okay. Donner Pass, thanks, Donner. Ben Romick 15 is just special. This is our cast strength. Oh, interesting. I'm getting some, some creosote. So there is some peat involved. And there's sherry cask. Is it a PX sherry? I'd have to read the label again. But this is interesting. Very interesting. Sorry to hear you've had a rough week. It happens all too often, but makes moments like these all the more sweeter. Yeah. Okay. What's this? Uh, at Catnap G, my brother was going to give me a Ben Romich 12, but decided on the Ben Riach Bernie Moss, intensely peated, very young and sparky. Amazing peat. I didn't like the Bernie Moss. I preferred the Curiositas. Uh, but Bernie Moss was about five years ago, and Curiosity what, Curiositas was about seven or eight, seven years ago. It's been a while. Uh, these sound like great samples. Very nice. Yes, they, they, they will prove to be. They, they look really good from what I've seen so far. And, uh, okay, this is me giving you the link to the first one of those Bimber videos. Ah, Waterford. You know, I've had a few Waterfords. The ones from the single farms, and they're they're all young whiskeys, they're okay, but I've had a, one that was a later edition, uh, that's a, a region. So the barley was taken from a few different farms, and I have another Waterford coming up, that was also from a few different farms, so um, I think the ones that are from a region rather than from single farms. Are a little better from what I've had so far but I haven't had that many I've had 
<coughs> quite a few Waterfords. Well, I've had a few. Just to let you know, <coughs> uh, let's try Whiskey Tourism London Part 3 again. Huh. Okay, what are we looking for, Waterford? Waterford. I've had two. One was the Waterford Single Farm Origin Bano Island Irish Single Malt Whiskey. The other one was the Waterford Organic Gaia One, two Irish Single Malt Whiskey. And those were both in the year 2021. I have another bottle of Waterford that I'm going to be opening soon. So I preferred the Gaia to the uh, single firm Bano, but they were both good. That's it for Waterford. Let's get back here. Yeah, uh, thanks for the link. I will be watching it. Yeah, and there's one of them that, that for some reason I can't put a link on. I don't know why, but <coughs> you can probably access it <coughs> from the other ones. Uh, there's another link. What's this? Donor Pass says, the first box I sent last year was in the middle of the big Canada trucker strike and took almost a month for you to get. Glad this one made it in a week, yeah? Yeah, thanks. I'm glad it got here so soon, too. Oh, this is... Uh, this Ben Rea 2010 is a powerhouse. It's a belter. Noticed we were at 14 people watching, then 10, now at 6. Yeah, because I bore them to death when I go trying to make links to post up here for people to watch. Sorry. Well, we're up to 7. How's that? Black screen. Yeah, I know. I, I pressed the wrong thing. Uh, I should have gone to the other the other tab and gone back, but I went back on this tab. And so, yeah, six worth people. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's this here? There you are. Yeah, I'm here, and then I'm going to disappear again. Watch. Quality, not quantity. Yeah. <laughs> if only. <laughs> For me, it's just quantity. True, okay. Okay, I'm done streaming, says Top Shelf Dustin. Okay. What's up, you legend? <laughs> Oh, phooey. Oh, you were streaming. Was Mike on there too? Oh, what's up? Okay, welcome back, Dustin. <coughs> Says Ben. Ben Roma cast strength is good with some water for me. Yeah, you know, I think I uh, think it could use some of that because it's quite a quite a piece of work without some water. And I forget what the cast strength is. I think two spoons would do it. Okay, let's move on. Thanks at Ben Demon Hunter. Finished up a crappy thumbnail for tomorrow and drinking on stream. Good time. <laughs> It's great with water, and I'm, I'm getting some of that sherry cask and some peated, nice balance. But it is it is a little hot. Leave open a little bay for nine months? Wow, okay. Well, that's what I would do. <laughs> Have a dram or two, leave it for nine months. 
I think it started good, getting good after six or seven. That's just my experience. Curiosity is no doubt. Missed out on that one. Very much would love a bottle. Hmm. Waterford might be the worst whiskey I've had. It depends which one you had. <laughs> the worst I've had that I remember was from Weems Malts. It was called Spice King, five-year-old. Ugh. Grotesque. All it was was spice, nothing else. Nothing else. No other tasting notes. Just spice, spice, spice. Yuck. <coughs> I think the Ben Roma cast strength is 50-50 all also and bourbon and lightly peated. <laughs> it's good, especially for $39.99 from KL. I forget what I paid. It's probably a higher number than that, but in Canadian dollars. Yeah. Now let's see what else we got here. Dustin, no sugar coating. <laughs> okay. All I ever hear about Waterford is that it will be good in about five years. I will stick with young Brook Laddie. There you go, Coan. There, there's one way to go. I've had a, yeah, I've had a couple of Waterfords. I, I'll buy one or two every now and then, but um, yeah, in five years, maybe ten years, who knows? Really appreciate all the time you took showing me the samples and sending the links. You're a true gent. Thank you very much, Katna. Um, what do we got here? Um, did have one sample of Waterford. It was fine, good, but I keep hearing people say it's overpriced and overhyped. That's also pretty much the case, yeah. And what, uh, what was that? Darn cross. Sup? Oh, you missed the whole thing. <laughs> We're just about done. Cohen passed on Waterford when it was closed, but last year for $50 here in Cali, we have heard so many bad stories to buy it. <laughs> Too many bad stories to buy it. Oh. It was closed out last year for 50 here. Okay. So you've got bad stories on Waterford. It's not the best whiskey, no, but give it time. Good evening, says Ben De Demon on to Darren Cross. Top Shelf Dustin says, <coughs> Donor Pass. <coughs> just this top shelf. Sample Sunday tomorrow. Mm. <coughs> Let me look. I forgot. Sample Sunday. Jefferson's. <coughs> Jefferson Straight Rye Whiskey. I'm going to have to start uploading the next week's videos. Mm. Okay. Let's go back to the stream yard. Okay, so did you hear that? Jefferson's Rye. That's what's coming up tomorrow for me. Dern Cross is asking me, are you the guy with the game channel? No, it's not me. I don't know who you're talking to. Uh, I was in other channels. I was on another channel stream, Quig. Mike is never up this late. Okay, okay, fair enough. Top Shelf says to Donner Pass, Klein Leash Select 2014, the first batch they did. Klein Leash Select. <coughs> I've never had that one. Cool, says Donner Pass. Ben Demon Hunter. In that case, it would be better for my brother to get Little Bay since he will let it sit for longer. Maybe. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're impatient, don't go for Little Bay. And of the Obens, there's 14. I don't know what other Obens there are. 
I haven't seen any. Uh, Top Shelf had the Gaia 1.1 from Waterford. I honestly think the people who made that should not have kids. And shame the shame of making that should last generations. <laughs> wow. Scathing review. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Which Gaia did I have? I forget. Waterford. I had 1.2. I think it was better than the uh, Bano Island. Okay. But 1.1, I didn't have the guy at 1.1, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Shame of making that should last generations. Oh, goody. <laughs> ah, you have a color way, colorful way of putting it. Ben Demon Hunter says to Dern Cross, no, I'm not. No game channel, unless you're asking Food Quick. He isn't either. No, I'm not. There you go. Got to put this out there. I don't like Lisa. I don't trust her. <laughs> you know what? We're not talking about Lisa right now. But she will be coming up on a few videos because she was here all afternoon. And we hung out all afternoon and we made some videos. Yippee! Durncross says, I think she uses my man Quig for lifts and whiskey. No, no, no. She eventually pays for the lifts. Whiskey, well, you know, she does drink some of my whiskey, but she's brought but she's brought over a couple of dinners too. A couple of weeks ago, we had some sushi. We had a whole great big mountain of sushi, and she brought it. She means well. I like the girl. Sample Sunday sounds like a good time and good excuse to finally open the bottle of old bottling of Highland Park 21. I guess. Sure. Top shelf Dustin, I'm surprised you aren't. Cohen says, okay. Cohen says to Top Shelf, I'm surprised you aren't on Big Vic's stream with the other 10 people on screen. I can't watch streams like that. Oh. That, that gets too confusing. Top shelf, Dustin. <laughs> okay. He's got a little smiley face. Yeah. Okay. Those are fun if you're on it. No clue how people watch. Okay. I see. Oh, here we are. And that other dude, what's his name? He's a thug. Really rubs me the wrong way. Well, yeah, he's annoying. Um, we will not be seeing him anymore on here. I'm not in contact with him anyway. Still got five people watching. That's nice. This. Ha ha, yeah, he's annoying. Exactly. Even Lisa says so. And I met him through her. <laughs> uh, Don Pass says uh, Ben Demon Hunter had a sample of that last year around Christmas. Think you are going to like it. Which one? What did Ben say? Um, old bottling of Highland Park 21. Okay. What this? So I started watching more and more of your taxi vlogs, Quig. Man, some of those old ones are fun. Yeah. I had fun with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've just been doing them for so long that I keep on doing them. The old ones, yeah, I think they were more fun when I was more youthful and less set in my ways. And
less, uh, well, I was more flexible, I think, when I was younger. And I was more enthusiastic about it. Now I'm just looking forward to retirement. I got six years and nine months exactly to go. And then I can get my pension and retire. I can't wait. It's amazing how time in a cask can make the world of difference in the quality of whiskey. Yes, it can. And top shelf Dustin. I like the length of the older ones, a bit shorter. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. The ones now I put together four or five segments and they come into about 20 minutes. The older ones, well, it was different. It was a different, a different time, a different everything. I'm not exactly the same as I was <coughs> when I put those older ones out. If you enjoy them, though, that's that's great. I know the ones that I'm putting out now are getting kind of repetitive, especially in the last year, because I've just been so tired from working so hard, and it's been harder than ever. Um, the last 15 months, that is that I ne okay, I've never seen as much stress or money as I have seen in the last 15 months. And Donner passes the top shelf. Glad you're enjoying the taxi vlogs. Quig is an old school YouTuber going way back. Yeah. It's only been about 16 years since I started on YouTube. Hmm. Yeah, if you look back at the old Feckwick channel, and I'll just put it up here. The old Feckwick channel. There are some uh, there are some interesting things on there. We did a lot of uh, traveling, traveling with Cindy, and uh, those videos are all still up there. We went to all kinds of places, and then we started trying food in restaurants, and and then those were popular videos. So I just started the Food Quick channel, and we we were going out to restaurants and trying the food and. Then uh, I started having a dram after dinner, and then I started bringing whiskey home, and then uh, that spun off to be the Food Quake channel. Yep. Man, was debating getting some delivery, but everything is quoting 80 mi plus minutes. No oh, pass. Yeah, I, I never get delivery. I buy everything in advance at the supermarket or grocery store or whatever. Bring it home. But last time, <clears throat> last time I had sushi delivered, it was Lisa who bought it. And she said uh, she had set it up for 6 o'clock, I think. And the sushi was here by 5.30. So, you know. And then she only got here by 8. <laughs> And I had that meal that night, and she had that meal that night, and I had the following day I had breakfast, that sushi that she brought, or she had sent. Donner Pass Whiskey says, that one at the end when Ben finished re-uploading the deleted ones, when you talk about the idea of moving in with Cindy and the song they here in my car is dubbed in is the perfect end. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Oh, yeah, you're talking about Ben 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 Arlego, of course. Finished uploading the deleted ones. Yeah, and that one was, that was one of the early ones. That was one of the early taxi vlogs that we, when we moved in together. Hmm. 
I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah, those were some early days of YouTube. And little did you know 10 years later that you'd make thousands and thousands on your Lafroy 10. I don't know about that many. I might have made a couple thousand, maybe 3,000. No, a couple thousand off it, perhaps. Maybe three. I don't know. Uh, I made a few bucks off it, but not, not as much as you would think, you know. Uh, oh, Quig, have you watched G Whiskey yet? Yeah, I subbed to him. I watched him. I don't know what to think yet. Um, I haven't necessarily, or did I? Did I comment on one of his videos? I'm not sure. But he's so... He's very commercial. Very commercial. And I can't find myself agreeing with him very much. Uh, that video isn't done paying. I have a feeling laughing out loud. No, you're quite right. And sometimes I get a few, uh, a few new subscriptions. In fact, my subscriptions went down. Uh, they went down after Hendrick came on. And now they're starting to climb again. And it's probably because of that video. Probably. Quiggy could make more money with a fans only channel. Uh, I have a, I have a Patreon. I have a Patreon channel, but I just put all my videos on it straight up. I take my videos and I upload them to the um, to the Patreon, and I have about eight patrons right now. Not that I'm actively um, looking for patrons. If somebody likes my videos, hey, they're in the description. You can always go to my. There's a link in the description to go to my Patreon page, and if you really like what you see. You may contribute to the channel. Nothing wrong with that. But I don't make a point of advertising it because I find it really boring and dull when somebody goes, like, subscribe, go to my Patreon page, support the channel, buy my merch. Fuck that. I'm sorry. That's not for me. I'm not going to be selling merch and I'm not going to be, you know, actively um telling people to join my channel that's not my way i like all your taxi vlogs no matter how long they are in fact the longer the better well thank you catnap that's high praise donner pass says yeah it keeps getting pasted on memes and social media accounts so new people keep discovering quig yeah but how many stick around hmm. I've got over 17,000 subscribers, and I typically only get 100, 150 views per video. Yeah, maybe some people stick around. If you actually set up a playlist from your taxi channel, as you talked about your relationship with Lisa and posted it here, and linked it from that video, huh? Set up a playlist from your taxi channel that you talked about your relationship with Lisa and posted it here and linked it from it. No. I don't think that would be a good idea. 
She's too close a friend. I bet it would go nuclear major views. Ah. No. No. Ah. I'm still trying to figure out what you're trying to say here. Set up a playlist from your taxi channel. You talked about your relationship with Lisa and posted it here and linked it from that video. No. No. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay. I don't think the vlog videos on her were negative. No, they weren't. Oh, just looked up your videos, and now I need to watch the Tomatin 14 port and Oban 14. Really want the Tomatin. Giant fan of Glenn Morangy Quinter Rubin 14, 12 port. Uh, okay, have you had the Quinter Rubin 14? Um, Tomatin 14, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a week ago. We did another Tomatin tonight. So you used to talk about your relationship so people could kind of see how it went. Which relationship are we talking about now? Uh, oh, you mean with with uh, with Cindy? Sometimes I don't know. Maybe I missed some videos that wouldn't be good. Okay. <laughs> and here, no Quinter Rubin fourteen yet, but probably soon. Okay. Been a couple of years since I had that one. Mm. This Ben Romick is very nice. I'm liking it. Hmm. Oh crap, my bad. Cin Cindy. Cindy. Cindy, yeah. Yeah, well, after I made that initial video about me and Cindy. We lived together for eight years, so there you go. I went to visit her last summer. If you look up on the Fequig channel and the Food Quick channel, there are some videos of me and Cindy last summer, uh, even on the Food Quick channel uh, in Lethbridge. Um, I can, yeah, I went to visit Cindy uh, last summer or this summer. I can't spell quick. Yeah, I, I, I know. I understand. <laughs> I might be getting well or 12 at the spirits release if it comes out. Likely a limit of one per person. Quig, have you ever had well or 12? Any thoughts? Is it worth it? <laughs> it's okay. I know I've had weller. I've had some wellers. <clears throat> I know I've had a Weller or two. Weller Antique 107, Larceny Weeded Bourbon, Weller Antique 107, Weller Special Reserve, and WL Weller Special Reserve. Okay. I haven't had the 12, but I've had a couple of Wellers, and they're okay but nothing spectacular to me. I think maybe they're overrated. Could that be? All right. It's all personal taste, but not 
port cask fan. It's got dark fruits, but the dark, damp cellar notes I get just don't work for me. Okay, fair enough. I kind of like port casks. Some of them are just fantastic. But, you know, everyone's different. Top Shelf Dustin says, I thought it was cool right away when you start watching the taxi vlog. The first video I saw as you take talking about maybe moving in with Cindy. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was that was an early one. And uh, we ended up moving in together, yeah. We lived together for eight years. Amazing how time flies. Dweller 12 at retail is a no-brainer buy. It's like 40 bucks at retail in the U.S. Oh, is it really? Um, I thought Weller was hard to find. I might be wrong. I don't know. I thought weeded whiskey down there was hard to find because it gets sold out right away and, and it gets on... Um, it gets on a lottery and it gets allocated and all of that. Okay. Readers in general are overrated and bland compared to bourbon with rye in it. Yes. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out because that's pretty much what I find. So the weeders are mostly for those people who aren't really whiskey drinkers, but they want to have whiskey or something like that. I get it. And there are only three people watching. Wow, we're we're cut, we're winding down. Did enjoy Weller Special Reserve. It was all right. I thought it was all right. Okay, Top Shop Weller Twelve is really hard to find, but if you can get one for retail, it's a great bottle. Okay, but yeah, that's the problem with uh, a lot of bourbons and especially things like weeded bourbons. They're hard to find. And what do we got here? Uh, I mean, again, it's 12-year-old bourbon for 40 bucks. Yeah. If there's one whiskey I wish I could get more of, it's the original Turconnell 16 without the wine finish, which ruined it. Oh, what a whiskey that was. Can't find it anywhere now. What a value. Yeah. Lots of luck. Sadly, never see it at retail. Weller 12 is three or 400 here. Oh, no. Probably not worth it, eh? <laughs> oh, we've got four people watching now, and we've been on for more than two hours. My goodness. I didn't think I would go on so long. Oh. But I still got some of this uh, Benaromic left. And it's nice. It is. Sherry and creosote. Very nicely balanced. But you got to save it for the last whiskey of the night. What's this? Sounds like highway robbery. Yeah. Glad you're liking the Venoma. I take a smidge of credit for asking you to have a dram or mentioning it. Thank you. I think it's better than it was when I first tried it. On the neck pour <sighs> out of the bottle. Uh, last weeder I tasted was Weller 107. Okay, that's the one that I had. And it was boring and bland. I don't get why people chase it. And I think I had the same kind of uh, kind of reaction to it. I always think of Van Romlich, Glen Geary, Deanston, and dare I say Le Chag as whiskeys that are honest and do not disappoint for the most part. Uh... I would say definitely Gen Glen Geary and Lechag. Deanston. I've had some questionable Deanstons. Especially the 18. 
it just wasn't right. Benaroma, uh, yeah, I, I'm probably with you on the Benaroma, but not with the Deanston. When I tried the Deanston 18, I was supremely disappointed. I was expecting so much more. Mm. But this Bren Roma is lovely. Is Weller considered a hipster brand? Well, that's a good question. It might be. From what I know, hmm, getting tired. From what I can tell or what I know or what I've seen, it's like a, it's like a baby Van Winkle, if that makes any sense. Or just overhyped in a tater bottle. <laughs> And Top Shelf Dustin would say, all of Buffalo Trace is hipster. Yeah, but you know, I like Buffalo Trace. I like Buffalo Trace. I like Eagle Rare. I like, dare I say it, um, Blanton's. I like Sazerac Rye. I like uh, just about everything they make. I, I, I don't dislike any of it. Buffalo Trace is good. Now, Weller and Pappy and Van Winkle and all that, that's from them too, isn't it? <sighs> oh, excuse me. What is here? 300 to 400 is crazy. No, I, I don't only pay retail. I don't do secondary. The prices are high enough already without secondary. All the Buffalo Trace brands are hipster brands except Benchmark, and it's worth its money. Benchmark? Benchmark is like the bargain basement entry level, isn't it? I didn't like it. But that's just me. Buffalo Trace is good. It's not standing line great. I think you summed it up right there. It's good. If I see a bottle of uh, Eagle Rare, Buffalo Trace, Sazerac Rye, yeah, I'll pick it up when I see it on the shelf, maybe. But I won't stand in line for it. Okay. Okay, the last two times I got a bottle of Blanton's, I did stand in line, but it wasn't, wasn't just for the bottle of Blanton's. It was for being first at the Spirits release. The last Spirits release, the premium Spirits release last year in November, and the summer Spirits release last June, I was first in line. So I got first dibs on whatever bottles they had at the store, at the participating store where I go to. I don't go to the big flagship store. I go to a smaller store that doesn't have quite as much. Uh, it's not as hyped, shall we say. Yeah. Okay. And what what else does Top Shelf say here? Food Quick, there is now like 10 different benchmark bottles. Value, and some of it is okay. Some isn't special. Okay, well, I don't get many of them here. I may, may have got one or two in the whole time. Did I, did I even make a video? Let's see. Benchmark. Benchmark, old number eight, Grand Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. June, of eight, June 8th, 2020. And I said here in my description, Buffalo Trace's answer to Evan Williams and Jack Daniels, old number seven. And then a link to my Patreon page. 
So yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a cheap bourbon. Or an inexpensive value priced bourbon. Yep. Okay. Standard Buffalo Trace seems to fit my palate nicely. Yeah, mine too. But give me Eagle Rare, and that just really hits the spot. Benchmark new higher UBV stuff is good for the money, not the old 80 proof black label swell. Okay. I can't get it here anyway, so it doesn't make much difference. And uh, Eagle Rare and Sazerai on the shelf. No way will that happen here. Oh. Really? I think I might have to call it a night, busy day. Glad I made it for most of the stream. Assume you'll soon be visiting Slumberland soon anyway, night quake, night all. Yeah, it won't be long. Shouldn't be long. Might watch a few videos and then go to sleep. I like Benchmark Full Proof for what it is and would take it over Weller 107. Okay. Weller 107 is one of the few Wellers I've had. It wasn't that great. BT store pick, Buffalo Trace store pick. Guy here in Alberta has a phenomenal bourbon palette and would very much enjoy another Buffalo Trace store pick. Okay. We got a J Fretless. Benchmark bottle and bond seems to the winner of that line of bottling. Okay, seems to be the winner. Okay. Bottle and bond, so 50% ABV. Uh, top shelf. So Benchmark is a new brand. They have full proof, top shelf, small batch, top floor, single barrel, and God knows what else. That is confusing. <laughs> Good night, Cat Not G, says Ben Demon Hunter. And Cohen says, Buffalo Trace store picks taste more like E.H. Taylor, small batch, and can be very decent for retail. Well, E.H. Taylor is another Buffalo Trace. <laughs> and each to E.H. Taylor is nice. But they have to be at retail price. Yeah. Oh, we got four people watching now that catnap's gone. I don't know if you all have much to say anymore. I know I'm getting towards the end. I'm surprised I stayed up this long. What's a Blanton's original complete set worth? I don't know. I've only had three or four bottles of Blanton's in my entire life. I couldn't tell you. Maybe somebody else knows. Uh, Donner Pass says hi to Jay Fretless. Mm -hmm. Four people watching. Mm, Jay Fretless might be gone already. There's only four. So I'm going to assume it's Donner Pass. Top shelf. Dern Cross and Cohen. Let's see. Oh, you'll like the prices on the new benchmarks once they get to you, Quig. They are slowly making their way out. Oh, okay. Almost time for bed, yeah. It's getting there. And uh, eight Blantons with all the letters, at least $1,000, maybe more. Wow. Uh, Jay Fretless says, hi, Tim. Okay. And uh, Cohen says, Japanese Blantons is worth more, and so is the French stuff. Oh, the ones that were exclusive to Japan and France? Yeah. Quig, try Tim, do 15. 
uh, if I can get some. I've had Tamdu 12, which I like. I've got a Cast Strength Tamdu um, 9H Statement just over there. And when I first opened it, all I got was sulfur. And, and I'm not really sensitive to sulfur, but this was like sulfur. Then when I tried it, what, a month or so later, or maybe two months later, it was a lot better. But the 15, uh, I'd have to go hunting for that. I'd have to look for it. <laughs> mm. A lot of whiskeys are at their best at about 15 years. Glenn Farkless, for example. Um, uh, was there a Bell Blair 15? That was good. Fifteen is usually about the age. It's somewhere between young and somewhere between old. Usually about the right age. Top shelf. Dustin says the Tamdu fifteen is pretty good. Bit overpriced here. Not crazy though. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I want to try Tamdu 18, don't know where to find. Oh, well, I don't know. Depends where you are. There might be a whiskey specialty shop near you that has it. You might be able to buy it online. I know I get a lot of things online that I could never get locally. And when I'm talking about online, for me, being here on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, I... Uh, if I'm online, I'm buying from Alberta. Seven people watching. My goodness, what's going on? Uh, yes, Glenn Fark is, is best at 15 because they give you 40%, 46%. However, I did have one bad bottle of that. And it was a bottle that I bought online from Alberta. And the price was something ridiculous, like 60 Canadian, where here it would be 100 Canadian. And you know what? That bottle being on sale, it wasn't good. And I expect it to be the same experience as the rest of the Glen Farkless 15s. But it wasn't. It was just one bad bottle. Tamdu has the bottle factor like Blanton's does. It looks sexy. Yes, it does. It is that beautiful angel in a robe art deco bottle. I agree. Jay Fretless says to Donner Pass, and I were at the same, oh, Donner Pass Whiskey and I were at the same bottle share and were introduced, but only until someone yelled out, what's everybody's YouTube name? Did I realize that I was in the presence of greatness? Well, there you go. And this was a bottle share? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very cool. See, somebody like Donner Pass Whiskey, I don't know what he, I don't know that well what he looks like. I've seen a couple pictures that he pre appeared in, but I wouldn't be able to pick him out if there was a picture with a few people on it. I wouldn't be able to pick him out. But me, I think I'm unmistakable. But that's because I've got so many videos out. Uh, Top Shelf says uh, to Dern Cross. Whiskey International Online had them for an okay price. Okay, well, that's good to know. Very happy that Canada has Glen Farkless 15. I concur. Top shelf, Dustin, how much? Oh, for that. Um, 
for the uh, for an okay price. All right. Okay. We'd have to look under 300. Okay. There you go. Spang Bank 15 is good, but over 150 now in the U.S. Uh, 150 U.S. No, it's not worth that much. I'd give it 100 U.S. maybe. 100 U.S. Yeah, that's about, about right. But 150? No. It better be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Darren Cross Malt Review has a review on it. Okay. And uh, how about Mortlock 16? I like that one. Mort Mortlock 16 was all right. Malt Review Richmond. Yeah. Top shelf dust and darn crust. Well, if you want reviews of good whiskey, you need people who can buy it. Our channels don't make us money laughing out loud. <laughs> it's true. They don't make us money. Guess that's true, exactly. Okay. Great to meet Jay Fretless at Phil and Deepa's house last month. Oh, you know, I would have liked to be there. And maybe sometime in future I can join you all down there in Californica. Uh, it would be nice. It would be nice to meet up with, uh, with all of you. Maybe someday. Hmm. Yeah, it would be fun. Maybe, maybe in the next year or two. We'll see. Springbank 15 was never under 120, let alone at 100. That said, the last couple of batches have been better. Okay, and we're talking U.S. prices, right? Mm, okay. All right. Old Pultney 15 and 18 were blah. They were okay, but the old 17 and the old 21 were superb. And I'm really surprised that they replaced them. I guess they couldn't duplicate the 17 and 21 like they used to be. So they replaced them with this new 15 and new 18, which were all right, but not as good as the old 17 and 21, definitely. Yep, U.S. prices. Okay. I was getting Springbank 15 in the U.K. with shipping for $95, but in the last two years, those days are gone. Okay. Yeah, they're gone. Brother has an unopened Mortlock 16 soon. I did Mortlock 16. When, when was that? Yeah. Uh, Mortlach 16, Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. I did that in October of 2020, so two years ago. And the last Mortlach I had was a Carnmore bottling in February of 11th. The wee witchy after five months was... <laughs> In November of 2020. So I did the Wee Witchy in May, and then two months later in August, or beginning of August. And I did the 16 in October of 2020, and I did the Wee Witchy after five months in November. <laughs> I don't think I could make up my mind on the Wee Witchy, but Mortlock 16 was a good choice. The 16 was nice. I liked it. Okay. What else do we got here? 
Okay. Okay. Thanks, Food Quick, says Ben Demon Hunter. Uh, 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 yep. And we're down to five viewers. I don't I think we're just about done. We're more than two and a half hours in. I've had a couple drams after having uh four or five drams before that. So I'm not hurting really, um, not at all. I don't know. Has anyone anything else to say? Oh, okay. Let's just he thanks Food Quig. And Cohen says, I still have not bought the Lafroig 16 because Karchus is what I buy and the price is decent. Lafroig 16, huh? If you can find a Lafroig 18, jump on it. That's all I got to say. Karchus is also wonderful. I never, the 16, is that some kind of a celebrity Lafroig? Not sure. I haven't seen it here. I haven't really bought. I'll be getting some, uh, some Karchus probably at a sample. Is this it? No, that's not it. No, that's not it. I think I did it already. Um, I did a sample Sunday of that one recently because I couldn't get a whole bottle here yet. Uh, it looks like I'll be able to get. Um, Hopefully at the premium spirits release a month from now. Carchus in the cast strength. You know, art bag, whatever the new art bag is of the year. I don't know. Okay, what's this? The 18 Freud is good, but the lore, in my opinion, is just as good. E the 18 is such a understated elegance to it, where the lore just kind of blasts you. But to each their own, you know, I, I both are excellent whiskeys. If you can find Freud, I think uh, I or I, I think I can still find lore, but Freud 18, I can't find it anymore. I mean, I must have got some of the last ones that there were on the shelf when they were still on the shelf. And I love that 18. Mm. The lore is very good too, but for my money, at half the price. They had the Lefroy triple wood. The triple wood was half the price of the lore. And okay, it's true that the lore is better or was better than the triple wood. The triple wood was a lot cheaper. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you make your choices as you go. Cohen says, I've had plenty of Lafroy 18 back when nobody cared and it was everywhere, and I don't know why they discontinued it. I agree with you. <laughs> I concur. It was great stuff back then. Yeah, Lafroy 18 was nice. Lore is one of the best quality scotches I've drowned. Really? Yeah, okay. I can see that. Is there some great King Street artist blend where you're at? I can't find any. Oh. To be honest, I haven't looked for it in a long time. I think there might be some locally. I'd have to go into the shops to take a look again. But like I said, it's been a while since I've had it. 
Great King Street was all right, but I preferred the um, or the the artist blend, right? I preferred the Glasgow blend. And if you can ever get your hands on some New York blend, do it. It is phenomenal. I agree with you, Quig. The 18 is more elegant. The lower is more of a punch. But side by side, they're real, they really are equals. Okay. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Still debating if I want to try triple wood or quarter cask first. Ah. Quarter cask is more basic. Triple wood is more complex, in my opinion, than quarter cask. But they're both bottled, I think, at 48% alcohol bud volume. Uh, if you can get them, try them both. That's what I would do if I hadn't tried them yet. I Glasgow blend was great. I concur. But the trouble with um, compass box is that they're putting out these more exclusive blends and pricing them accordingly. And you know, I, I don't want to pay $250 for a, a blended malt that has some Kalila and some Kleinlation, <clears throat> a couple other things in it. Ah, <clears throat> let me get another glass of water because if I don't do that, I'm going to have cramps in my legs when I wake up the next time. All right, so what should I be drinking now? That Ben Aromat was strong, wasn't it? That Ben Aromat was bottled at 58.5. Hmm. Ah. I know, I know what I'm gonna have now. Red breast cast strength, twelve year old. That's another way to finish off the night. Yeah. All right. 
Here we are, six people watching and more comments to go through than that. Glasgow Blend is way better and has Sherry and Laphroaig in it. Marion casts are very good and more Sherry and Age. Yeah. Only compass box I've had. Oh, the Glasgow Blend. Oh, Good King Street. Uh, Glasgow Blend. That's the only one you've had. Okay. Well, there are some other ones that are very good, like Pete Monster and Spice Tree and uh, Oak Cross. The only one that I didn't like was the Asyla. I found it kind of bland. Trouble problem with compass boxes that their quality is dropping and prices are going up. But they are at the mercy of where they source it from. Yes, they are. Exactly. I think I'm passing on the new Flaming Heart, and I still have not seen reviews for it. Well, Cohen, I've had Flaming Heart, but earlier Flaming Heart, like from five years ago, and I, I thought it was great. But it's a problem of availability. I can't get Flaming Heart from around here. The last time I got a bottle of Flaming Heart, it was up in Duncan. That was like a, an hour's drive from here. They might have some there, but I can't get it here locally. And I haven't seen it on sale. I haven't seen it online either. For, for what it's worth. Geez, wanted to go to bed, but now I'm hungry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Canada Dry Hands. Is Hibiki Harmony worth the price? It's $120 over here. Uh, Hibiki Harmony, if it's like 80 bucks, I'd say okay. But 120 Canadian plus taxes and all. The trouble with a lot of Japanese whiskeys is that they are quite plain and harmonious and nothing really stands out. Nothing really comes out to grab you. In my opinion, uh, I had one bottle of it to try it. The bottle makes a nice decanter for world whiskeys. But I wouldn't buy... Hibiki Harmony at $120. I don't, I don't think it was that much when I bought it. And uh, no, at Canada Dry Hands. Thank you, Dustin. You, you said it much more succinctly and more um, <laughs> more, uh, more uh, expeditiously and quickly than I would have. Uh, Amiki Harmony isn't worth more than 60 ish. Okay, and we're talking US prices, so yeah, I'd say about 80 Canadian. Yeah, that's about right. Um, even 60, you're paying for a cool bottle. Yeah, you're paying for a decanter, exactly. Amiki <laughs> is Japanese for Blanton's bottles. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is good. Mm. Mm. This is oh, this is so good. Had an artist blend that was aged eighteen months in sherry. Wonderful. Eighteen months in sherry. How much of this do I have left? Oh, more than half a bottle. Good. Because I like this red vest 12. Uh, cast strength, of course. Hmm. What is the 58.3? Uh, uh, what is it? 56.3. It says 50. It's hard to tell if that's a 6 or an 8. I think it's 56.3. That's fine. 
It's just fine. Eighteen months in Sherry. Hmm. Uh, what's here? Cohen, a all of it feels like Blanton's. <laughs> And we're talking uh, about Hibiki. Yeah, okay. The new Flaming Heart looks insane. It's like a billion blends mixed together. Oh, so you've gone online for that and checked out what's involved? Okay. Anything in sexy bottles gets the Blanton's treatment. <laughs> Night Quig and all, thanks for going live. Oh, thank you, Donner Pass. Thank you, Tim. Ben Demon Hunter says, good night, Tim. Hibiki is best on a very clean palate when you haven't had anything for at least a few days, and it's the first pour. Yeah, okay, I can, I can agree with that. Canada Dry Hands likes Santori Toki. It's okay, but... Kind of bland to me. Sometimes I wonder if we see bottles on great sales. Got to question the quality. Yeah, that's true too. And uh, Taki is another okay one on a very clean palette as the first pour. And if you can get it for $25 or less, good luck. Or should I say Ratsa Rock? Ratsa 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 Rock. Ah, this is wonderful. This is beautiful. This is malted and unmalted barley at its finest. This has a lot of vanilla notes. Mm. Vanilla and sherry. Mm. Springbank is unobtainable for most, yes. Springbank is unobtainium nowadays because it's gone the way of uh, Pappy Van Winkle. It's like 65 here. Or is that all? Or are we talking about Toki? And Dern Cross, depends on the sale. Cas case in point, I bought a Linkwood 37 year old for 450 on sale from over 1,100. Not worth retail, but well worth the sale price. Okay. Springbank is very obtainable in the States if you want to say just the 10. Okay. Yeah, the 10. But what if you, what if you want 15? And what if you want cast strength? And what if you want uh, local barley and all of those other things they got? Just bought my second local barley a full week apart. Oh, okay. There you go. Can't get that here. Dern Cross, this is whiskey in the six. I'm Rob. Now I'm supposed to believe that? <laughs> I don't know. Why aren't you whiskey in the six? Why are you darn cross? <laughs> yeah, laughing out loud, sure. Just depends on where you live and all that. Yeah, that's true, too. Darn cross. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, top shelf. Cohen, vanilla and sherry. We're the best strippers in the Spearmint Rhino. The Spearmint Rhino, never heard of that one. Who would lie about being Rob? Yeah, I kind of wonder about that too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could say that I'm Ralphie Mitchell too, but I guess you wouldn't believe me because I don't look like him. Uh, yeah.
If old Paltney couldn't continue to live up to the old 17 and 21, that's a bad sign for where their quality is headed. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that. It's sad, really, because I used to love old Pulteney. And after trying their 15 and 18, and their, their, I think I tried their new 12 as well. That was uh, a couple of years ago on a camping trip, I tried those. And they did not quite live up to the 17 and the 21. Those two were just fantastic whiskeys. The 15 and 18 weren't anywhere near. They were okay, but they weren't anywhere near the 17 and 21. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Oh, this, this, this one will be my last round. The 21-year-old. No, it's not. It's a 12-year-old. Red breast. Delicious. Spearmint Rhino is a gentleman's club in Vegas. They just opened a Spearmint Hippo. No joke. Okay. Well, yeah. If you're down in Vegas, they would have clubs like that. We used to have one here, but what happened was this was nothing quite as uh, sensational as Las Vegas, but um, we had a, a club called the the Fox, and uh, there were peelers in there, and there were a lot of country boys screaming "woohoo" every time somebody took something off. The problem with that place is that the boys would get all liquored up and then they would pick fights in the parking lot. And if you got beat up by somebody in the parking lot, you could sue the hotel where the red fox was or where the fox was. And uh, the insurance didn't want to cover them anymore because they were paying out too much. So they said, the insurance said to the Fox or to the hotel, either you close down the Fox or we're going to close down your whole hotel and not insure you at all. So we'll insure you if you close down the Fox, but we won't insure you no more if the Fox is still open. So that killed the Fox and that killed the last peeler bar in town. We used to have another one called Monty's Downtown in the old Victoria Plaza Hotel. But the Victoria Plaza Hotel, well, Monty's was closed. And then the Plaza Hotel was a real roach trap anyway. And then the Plaza Hotel burned down. And there was no chance of having Monty's anymore. I'm from Montreal. I enjoyed peeler bars back in the day. And maybe when I move back to Montreal when I retire, which I will, I will get into peeler bars again. Quig, does indie bottles like Carnmore make the distillery whiskey better? Sometimes. And sometimes Carnmore, indies like Carnmore are the only examples of the whiskey that you can get such as diluin for example i've never seen an official bottle of diluin but i've had some carnmore and i've had some heart brothers and i think i've had some uh, signatory i'm not sure i'd have to check uh, i do have quite a bit of whiskey bunkered and i don't remember everything that i bought but i've indie bottles can be better. Yes, they can be better or they can be worse than the official bot links. So beware. You know, it's a crapshoot. You either get something better than what you would get from the distillery or something worse, depending on where in the pecking order the bottler is. If it has top dibs like Carnmore or uh, 
Uh, what's another one that's up, uh, up at the top? Uh, Gordon McPhail, they're up at the top. Or, um, yeah, Signatory Vintage, they're up at the top. But if you get some fly-by-night bottler that bottles only what they can get after everyone else has rejected it, someone like, oh, perhaps, I don't know if this is appropriate, but there was this one, Fontana Beverages. Uh, I think they were down at the bottom of the pecking order. And what they had was not necessarily great. Uh, okay. Chain of strip, a chain of strip clubs. Oh my goodness. I'm living in the wrong country sometimes. Uh, I think Cheetahs is a chain strip club. Also, a chain strip club. There are no chain strip clubs in Canada. <laughs> and if you go by the local the local uh, things, there are no chain, there are no strip clubs at all here in town anymore. None. Because there were too many fights in the parking lot. And the uh, and the boys beat each other up, and then the insurance didn't want to carry them anymore because there were too many claims. I could go back to Montreal. Well, I will go back to Montreal, and as far as I know, there are still pillar bars there. Chain strip club. That's something else. Chain of all over the country. Wow. Yeah, I'm in the wrong country. Uh, suing. Would do it, those booze hounds. Yep. There you go. In Cali, it's no clothes, no alcohol laws. Yeah, um, I noticed the same thing in Seattle when I first moved west 30 years ago. And uh, went to, I was used to peeler bars because I was from Montreal. And went to a peeler bar in Seattle and there was no alcohol. None. You couldn't buy alcohol. You could buy the girl a drink, but it was non-alcoholic. And your drinks were non-alcoholic too. But you'd get a lap dance, I guess. Where are we? History. Yeah, history. No carn more brought to the U.S. yet. Oh, I, I get it here. I get it here from Alberta. Um, it's, you know, 70 CL bottles. And, and um, I get them here. Definitely. I have some, I have, a, I have about three bottles of Carnmore now. Uh, really, Cali has those awful laws at Cohen. That's insane. Well, it's the same laws they have or had in Seattle 30 years ago. They're not bad laws. That would eliminate the fights. And um, if you get a lap dance, for example, you'd feel more if you're sober. Now I gotta watch that video, haha. <laughs> Which one? I forget. Uh, anyone try Scallywag Christmas Edition? No, I haven't. But I've had two or three Scallywag editions. They were all good. Uh, don't know how these clubs stay open and why someone would even open one in Cali. Uh, they might make some money for somebody. I got a first release Lockley, but I hear it's nothing special, but might be worth a pretty penny one day. Oh, you didn't open it? I tried it just tonight. Uh, the first release Lockley with Lisa. And we both thought it was, uh, it was quite tasty, although it was a little young and quite fruity. But, uh, yeah, I had the first release, luckily, uh, earlier tonight. Yeah. What's this? So I ain't opening it. Well, okay. I don't think it's going to be a great big thing. Luckily, is just another, yeah, just another 
small upstart distillery. Compass box sucks. Well, they're getting more expensive and not as good, I suppose. Douglas Lang is better, but going downhill. Douglas Lang has been fine. I've always enjoyed Douglas Lang's um, vatted malts, or should we say blended malts. They've all been good. I haven't had a bad one yet. Aaron is on the rise. Eh. Aaron's okay. If you've not had good compass bucks then during the round, okay. There are some good ones, yes. Uh oh. Good day, you son. <laughs> K9 Nick. What's up, Nick? What's going on? Finally reached around to the morning side, did we? Hmm. Hmm. It's almost midnight here, and I'm enjoying a good old red breast 12 cast strength. So I'm not complaining about anything. Glendronic H statements have vanished. Really? They've all sold out, you say? You can't get any 15 or 18 or 21 or even a 12? I got some Glendronic. I got a, I bought one just the other night. Or did I buy it online? I think I bought it online. It's bunkered. Um, I would like to try some Dram more stuff also. Yeah, I have a couple bottles from them. I don't believe I've opened them yet, but I will. The Freud 10 Sherry Oak kills triple wood and then buries it. Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> La Freud 10 Sherry Oak is good. Yeah, no, I I concur on that one. Yeah. Got to agree with you. Okay, I Nick, just been out to dinner with the missus. Out to dinner. Out to dinner. So what time is it there? It's about eight hours, six hours, five hours earlier than here, but it's the next day. That's that's weird when you cross the international date line. Okay. K9 Nick. Italian. I remember years ago a pizzeria we went to was owned by Iranians, the live music was a Ma Ma Maori playing American standards on his guitar. <laughs> oh, talk about cross-cultural clash. <laughs> oh my goodness, almost 8 p.m. Okay, almost 8 p.m. So it's almost midnight here. So you're eight hours eight hours ahead of us? No, 8 p.m. So 8 p.m., so you're behind us eight hours, but you're ahead of us 20, you're ahead of us 16 hours. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. Eight hours and... 12 hours, 20 hours. You're ahead of us 20 hours because where you are, it's already the 2nd of October. And here it's still the 1st. That's right. Sunday, yeah. Okay, you, you, you've you already mentioned that. You're in, you're in Sunday, Sunday at 8 p.m. And I'm still at almost midnight on Saturday. 
Yeah, you're ahead of us a day because we've crossed the date line. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to get my head around that right now after the the amount of whiskey I've had to drink and and um, and so on and so on. <laughs> Glen Cadden 15 is also a great one. Yeah, Glen Cadden 15, absolutely. Ralphie liked that one too. So did I when I had it. I can't find it anymore. I kind of know my whiskey. Well, if you're robbing the six, you would, yeah. I'm happy to help. You got this. At Dern Cross, have you had the Karchus three wood? It's good, says Cohen. No. Now I want it, laughing out loud. Good luck finding it. If it's any consolation, Sunday is the same as last Sunday. Yeah, Sundays are usually about the same, aren't they? <laughs> Canine Nick, you on like Guam? Um, K9 Nick is in New Zealand for what from what I understand. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, this stuff is wonderful. <laughs> is this an answer? New Zealand, yeah, that's what I said. NZ. Or NZ for you people south of the uh, 49th parallel. Well, I'm south of the 49th parallel too. Because if you look at the geography of Vancouver Island, the southern tip of Vancouver Island is south of the 49th parallel. And um, that's where I am, in Victoria. And so I'm south of the 49th parallel as well. But I'm still considered to be in Canada because I'm on Vancouver Island. And they didn't draw the line through the island because Fort Victoria was established as a British stronghold so that the Americans wouldn't come north or something like that. <laughs> okay, and said or NZ, depending on where you are. And uh, North Island, Waikato, North Central. Okay. I have no idea where that is, but I'll take your word for it. And brother-in-law is in Wellington. Oh, well, there you go. Small world. Wellington, about five hours or so from here. Oh, that's not too bad. Wellington, five hours. What's well, five hours from here? Tofino? Shelter Point? Yeah. Well, somebody else has commented. During cross, I wasn't lying about being a man, whiskey in the six. I was just doing an impression when he said, in one breath, "Hey everyone, this is whiskey in the six. I'm Rob. Love the guy." Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whatever boats your float, that's cool. Six people watching, and another new comment comes in. Dustin, impressions don't work so well in text. <laughs> 
impressions or impersonations. Yeah, impersonations don't work so well in text. That's true, nor, that, nor does sar sarcasm. And I believe that was pointed out to me as long ago as 30 years ago. Sarcasm doesn't work in text. In, uh, yeah, impersonations or impressions. Yeah, they don't. Nah. So it's lost on people. And the part that's supposed to be humorous is, is not. <laughs> Yep. Uh oh, somebody else said something. I am. Thanks at Canine Nick. I'll look it up. Giant geography nerd. Oh well, there you go. You found the right person to look up then. Did I take my pill with dinner? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. mm. Wow, we're still going. Um almost three three and a half hours. Old. Top shelf, yep, you're right. Lesson learned. Okay, good, good. What we got here? Bedtime will need to be soon. I concur. You know what? On that note, well, what's this? Long day. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to end it too because I'm getting I'm getting to the point. Uh, it's midnight here. It's been a treat. It's been a blast. It's been fun. It's been educational, it's been informational, and it has been Great. I enjoyed interacting with all of you tonight. And uh, what's this? Ben, I'm in a town called Petaruru, or Putaruru, our south of Hamilton. Cool. How many open and bottles do you have at the current? How, who are you asking? Uh, if you're asking me, it's lots and lots. Oh, now that I said it's a uh, series of mini strokes, yuck. No, my problem is just uh, diabetes. So I'm on a uh, thing called metformin, another one called glyburide, and another one called invocana. And I'm on some stuff to protect my kidneys from high blood sugar called... Um, don't you hate when that happens? It's called Ramapril. So that's that's my daily cocktail. Okay, what are you? What's this? Ben Demon Hunter says wife is Filipino, so I know that the Philippines are like thirteen four hours ahead. Okay. Okay. Clapped out. <laughs> Quig has diehard fans to have this many messages with just a few viewers. Nice. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this Quig is getting kind of ex exhausted and wants to hit that bed right over there. So um, I'll tell you what. Yeah, tell you what, we'll do this again someday. You all have yourselves a good night. And uh, Slanchava.